Hello, good evening, and welcome to Prime Business with me, Pai Osko, Joe Baka. Economist Professor Lord Mensah is warning the 2024 budget and some macroeconomic targets stand derailed should organized labor embark on a strike come Thursday, October 10. Organized labor today announced their resolve to go on strike, demanding government to crack down on illegal mining by banning all forms of mining in forest reserves, among other measures. But Professor Mensah cautioned about a total economic shutdown if government fails to meet the demands of organized labor. And also, you know, looking at the possible losses that we can get, are we going to have from this, um, you know, um, strike? It, it, it's, it's a problem because we live in a country where all our avenues for raising money, you know, has come down. And so the only thing that we are relying on is taxes. And the taxes, mainly indirect taxes that we leverage on to build you know, this economy. And that is, you know, we get that from human activities, movement of labor from one point to the other, and then all those four purchases and other things. Those are the things that builds up into these indirect taxes. And if you are collecting taxes of about 55 billion a year and if you split that that by day and this strike lingers on on daily basis i can tell you the country will lose much and that will derail you know our budget for this year and again we may not be able to meet some of the targets that we propose to imf the energy commission is making a call for investors to support government to establish appliances testing facilities to verify the authenticity of electrical gadgets. According to the Commission, Ghana needs about 17 more testing centers to be able to meet the demand of importers dealing in such gadgets. Speaking to journalists at a town hall meeting on the energy efficiency regulation, Assistant Manager at the Commission, Hubert Zani, said the establishment of more testing centers will also help maintain standards. The need for testing facilities follows implementation of new standard and energy efficiency regulations passed by Parliament aimed at reducing CO2 emissions and reducing costs of electricity. The regulations apply to a wide range of appliances, including refrigerators, air conditioners and microwaves, ensuring compliance with minimum energy performance standards and introducing star ratings affixed on each product. According to the Energy Commission, more testing centers are needed to ensure that gadgets imported into the country meet all the requirements. Assistant Manager at the Energy Commission, Hubert Zani, has been speaking with journalists at a town hall meeting in Accra. We started with refrigerators and air conditions. We invested in collaboration with the Ghana Standards Authority to set up a testing facility for lighting, refrigerators and air conditions, which we have. Now we have expanded the scope to add 17 more appliances, which includes washing machines, televisions, electric um, kettles, wa wa clothes washing machines, water heaters, uh, computers, and even renewable energy products. And we believe that this is a business opportunity that investors can take advantage of. The reason why we need these facilities is to make sure that we are verifying the claims of these importers the claims of these manufacturers. So Energy Commission is to play the role of a referee. The Commission is here to help Ghanaian importers. We believe that these are businessmen who have their money and so should not be cheated in terms of the products they are giving. Zani disclosed the country made a lot of savings in power after implementation of the new regulations. In some cases, we have new products which are also substandard or do not meet our minimum requirement. What we have done is to come up with regulations setting the minimum energy performance for these products and we advise that any importer who is bringing these products into the country must meet the minimum energy performance before the products will be allowed in. Significant savings that we have made in terms of consumption includes about 124 megawatts of peak savings when we introduced the CFL project and we think that this kind of achievement can be replicated with the new appliances that we have added to the regulations. The Commission is declaring a new awareness campaign on the regulation as part of moves to increase compliance. In a bid to develop Ghana's livestock sector to boost its contribution to the country's economy, the Ministry of Food and Agriculture has announced that it will invest in modern methods of livestock farming to increase production. Speaking at the launch of the 2024 National Livestock Day, Deputy Minister for Food and Agriculture in charge of livestock, 
Alhaji Hadi Tifiru noted that proper research and tailored support will increase the sector's contribution to Ghana's GDP. More in this report. As of 2022, livestock contributed about 4.9 billion CDs to Ghana's economy. This represented nearly 13% of the contribution of agriculture to the country's gross domestic product. The total number of livestock in the country is estimated to be over 90 million. In view of this, the Ghana National Cattle Farmers Association, in collaboration with the Ministry of Food and Agriculture, have organized the Mating National Livestock Day. The ceremony is aimed at encouraging conversations which will improve Ghana's livestock sector. Deputy Minister for Agriculture, in charge of livestock, Alhaji Hadi Tuferu, emphasized government's commitment to support the sector. Diligence tests will be made to invest into one, research for high yielding, climatic resilient livestock breeds adapted to Ghana's ecological conditions. Two, the development of ecological zonal breeding centers equipped with modern facilities to support artificial insemination and other breeding technologies to enhance genetic diversity and productivity in the livestock sector. Three, the creation of breeding reserves and corridors along the length and breadth of Ghana and capacity building and demonstration centers to train livestock farmers on modern system of ruminant farming and best practices. President of the Ghana National Cattle Farmers Association, Imam Hanfi Sondi, called on government to develop tailored solutions which will aid the growth of the sector. He added that broader consultations will be needed to settle disputes between nomadic cattle breeders and crop farmers. On the other hand, we are aware that the industry, especially the cattle sector, is confronted with numerous challenges, including animal health issues, livestock theft and wrestling, livestock theft and wrestling, lack of proper data collection for livestock, and the worst of all of them is the conflict or the farmer header conflict which has continued to claim lives and properties. Cattle breeders at the ceremony also seized the opportunity to appeal for a livestock fund which will support the appropriate rearing of cattle to boost the country's production. Two huge cattle were presented to the state by the Ghana National Cattle Farmers Association as an appreciation for their efforts towards the growth of the sector. Government is being entreated to reduce the charges on goods at the ports. According to the Dean of Business and Communication at Academic City University College, Professor Enoch Opoku Enchi, the increasing cost of clearing goods is becoming unbearable due to the volatile exchange rate regime. Speaking to Joy Business, Professor Opoku Enchi urged government to take a cue from other neighboring countries to make Ghana's ports competitive in the West African subregion. 72,000 Ghana cities for Honda Accord. So he was saying that if you can fix our city and then the port, we can reduce, you know, how we charge people. He think that things will be easier for Ghanaians. Why? Because we are the only continent in Africa who consumes more what we don't produce and produce what we don't consume. So most of the things we have are imported. And if people are paying high you know, rates at those ports, it means that when the price comes, the average consumer, everything will be you know, added to that person. Because Adam Smith, who is the father of economics, says that everybody who is an entrepreneur or a business person is in for profit. So we should look at that. Togo here, recently I was in Togo. Look at the prices of cars. Easy. Because, you know, the port duties are so low. That's it for Prime Business for today. I am Pius Kojo Baka. Prime Sports is next.